Welcome to worship on our third Sunday of Advent. Welcome to any guests or visitors that we have with us here this morning, either in the sanctuary or from wherever the Holy Spirit finds you this morning online. It is good to be here with all of you. I will not go through all the announcements today at the end of worship, so I am commending your entire bulletin to you to go through so many things are happening here at Prince of Peace that I want you to be in the know. So please do take your bulletin home with you and check dates and ministry opportunities um, that are printed there. And I would like to invite you to stay after worship and join us for fellowship in the fellowship hall. Steve and Carol Johnson are hosting today and there's all kinds of goodies and refreshments. So please do stay for a time of fellowship following worship. We begin with our call to worship in lighting of the Advent wreath. By the light of this third candle, help us to rejoice greatly in you. May we no longer suffer alone. May our siblings in Christ take notice of the lamentation within our human family. May we each act in our own way. May righteousness and praise spring up, for with you all things are possible. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed one. Prepare our lamenting hearts to confess our sin and receive your forgiveness. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we know that you lament the ways in which we harm your beloved children. We are robbers, greedy, selfish, and self-centered. We engage in wrongdoing focused on what we can get instead of what we can give. Please forgive us for our sin and turn us from our wicked ways that we may share comfort with all who mourn. Amen. Take heart, beloveds. God has heard your prayer and your sins are forgiven. You have been given a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a mantle of praise rather than a faint-hearted spirit. Rise up, for you have been called oaks of righteousness. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray. God who saves, thank you for anointing Jesus to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners. Help us to continually proclaim the year of your favor to those who are lamenting now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Hallelujah, Christ, Christ shall, shall come. come. Come, thou long expected Jesus. And the world waited the coming of the truth, the light, the way. Born to set thy people free. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. His coming was foretold by the prophet Isaiah, then announced to a young, frightened virgin named Mary. How can this be? I am overwhelmed by God's goodness to me. I don't understand it all. Yet, I will trust the Lord. And he shall come.
God fulfilled his promise to send a savior. On a quiet night with no pomp or pretense, he came to us. Alleluia, Christ, Christ is, is born. born. To shepherds on a hillside, his coming was announced. What could it mean? They were stunned and amazed as they ran to the manger. Led by a star, astrologers called wise men would soon chart their path to worship the newborn king. May we, like the shepherds and wise men, look for God's promises. Wait patiently for God's truth to be revealed. And follow his light to lead us to the joy that only he can bring. Gloria, Gloria in, in Chelsea's Dale. Dale. the newborn king. 
It was a pure light that led the ancient worshipers to the holy light. And it was to the child of light they brought their gifts of adoration. What gifts can we bring him? How do we worship the child in the manger? Give him ourselves, for he is the light, he is the Christ. Worship him with our hearts. You may remain seated. The word of the Lord according to the prophet Isaiah from the 61st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, 
the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities and devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Theologian Amy Jill Levine writes, Salvation means that there is what respite from whatever oppresses in the community that hears and lives the gospel. Men and women, slaves and free people all come together to say, in our midst we have a savior. For Jesus to be a savior and for the good news to function as salvific, the gospel says that we do not need to wait for some far-flung future. We see it in the presence and we can anticipate it tomorrow. God incarnate in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit came as the light of the world to illuminate the way of salvation, bringing all manner of being into the suffering of the cross to be made free, free from the bondage of sin and death and given the gift of peace and grace. Isaiah sings of this power that enables him to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners. Jesus is the light of the world that finds its way into the unlikeliest of places, the light that brings healing and release, the light that visits us with joy when we cannot imagine it, the light that meets each hunger, the light that causes us to testify to its presence in the deepest of shadows. In this Advent season, we bear this light for one another. And may Christ our light go with us and illumine our way. This indeed is our good news. For the broken heart and the light comes as solace and unexpected grace. In this dark time when there is no one who can walk your unique road of pain and suffering and discomfort, the light comes as a vivid reminder that we have, at the least, the power to help illuminate the path for one another. On this third Sunday of Advent, we call this Gaudet Sunday. Gaudet is Latin for rejoice. We light the pink candle as a reminder that even in the midst of whatever we are dealing with this season, whatever pain, that the Lord our God comes with light and illuminates the way. 
So beloveds, I have this blessing for you, a blessing written by Jan Richardson. When your weeping has watered the earth, when the storm has been long and the night and the season of your sorrowing, when you have seemed in exile from your life, lost in the far country, a long way from where your comfort lies, when the sound of splintering and fracture haunts you, when despair attends you, when lack, when trouble, when fear, when pain, when empty, when lonely, when too much of what depletes you and not enough of what restores and rests you, then let there be rejoicing. Then let there be dreaming. Then let there be laughter in your mouth and on your tongue shouts of joy. Let the seeds soaked by tears turn to grain, to bread, to feasting. Let there be coming home. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. God our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of a Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for your birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to God's table of grace. For those of you who are worshiping from afar, the elements that you have prepared are sufficient. Blessed by the Holy Spirit and Christ is with you in your meal. In this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come and take your place at the table. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For those who are worshiping from home or partaking in your pews, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Proclaim him Christ the Savior. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Because of this unspeakable gift given to us by God the Father, how can we keep from singing? In him was life. The life was the light of men. Proclaim him Christ the King. Tell the good news this season and always. Proclaim him Christ the King. Rejoice. Christ came to show us truth and to give light for our way and to offer eternal salvation. We worship Christ not only for who he is, but because of what he did for us. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Whoever believes in him will not live in darkness, but have abundant life. Father, forgive us for our foolish, selfish ways. You came to offer your life as a holy sacrifice for our sin. We accept your gift with thanksgiving. And we seek your light to guide us to the abundant life you offer.
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Father God, thank you for coming into our world to offer the peace which passes understanding, to offer life which never ends. And yet, there are those who haven't experienced your peace, those who remain in darkness. What shall we do? We reject the darkness. We embrace your light. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. We must share his light. We must share his love. We celebrate love begotten of the Father. We celebrate life given of the Son. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is born. born.
We give thanks for the gift of music that has been shared here today, for our choir director and our musicians and all of our peace singers. <laughs> Beloved of God, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit and receive this blessing. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Keep awake. Thanks be to God. God.